we have got a game for you. Ooh. Philadelphia versus the Warriors. These Saturday night games are good, man. Yeah, and, there. of course, Paul Pierce will be on NBA Countdown starting at 8 o'clock. You can see it on TV or you can see it on the app just right from your pocket. We're all good. Mm -hmm. We are joined now by ESPN Magazine writer Kevin Arnovitz. I'm telling you, I could introduce you like Bomb Vivant, Food Critic. There's like 16 titles you have, but I picked Magazine Writer for today, so there we go. Um, you were speaking at the Sloan Sports Conference this morning. You gave a, I would say, a keynote impassioned defense of why the NBA schedule should be shortened, and, and I just explain. All right. I mean, look, the NBA is doing fine now, and we're junkies. We're going to watch on a Monday and a Wednesday night. We're going to go to any game we can go to. But I think, in Kevin, the... everyone's going to watch Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, Absolutely. and Sunday no, afternoon too. And please too. tune in on every mm -hmm. ESPN on doubleheader movie said... and, and showcase game. <laughs> um, but. The world's changing. Yeah. The people in it are changing. And I just think the NBA is going to need a more compelling regular season product going forward if it doesn't want to end up as sort of the blockbuster video. Uh, Man. You know, athletics, no, listen, it, wow. it, it is doing fine, but Paul can attest to this. Like the regular season, kind of dull. Players kind of phone it in, especially this time of the season. <laughs> I mean, after he's done, I have a few no, 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 suggestions. Okay, all right. Look, there, we, we've spent a lot of time talking about disgruntled superstars, you know. But I, I do think in terms of just getting the product to be more saturated, more it's, you're never going to get playoff you basketball. You want to make each game more important. I want to make it more meaningful. I want games in which I players agree. are healthy. I agree. Games in which players are rested, in which they're motivated, where the matchups seem a little special, where maybe teams only do see each other two or three times a season, where, where just the, there's a better sense of playoff feel to the regular season product. People, I think it should be shorter for the simple fact that you probably take away a lot of resting guys that don't really need rest, you know, and then there's more urgency on the regular season, a sprint to the finish line. It's such a long season that guys were like, okay, we'll rest this week. We'll pick it up back next week. Another thing I would change, I would go to the one through 16 season. Okay. Look. I would go to that. Also for all-star, mm -hmm. I would take away conference. We already took away conference. I wouldn't take 12 from the East or 12 from the West. I'll take the 24 best. So, Paul, you have hit on three things in a row that are but very big. I think they big. all go hand in hand. I, I agree with you, and they're big causes among NBA people, like NBA conversations. I would like to live in the fairyland that you guys both live in because guess what? A shortened schedule, I understand maybe you could make ticket prices higher to kind of make up for less games, but you can't make up the TV revenue. You are not going to have ownership. You don't ownership. have to change. Our revenue doesn't change. The global the, the contract local, does not change. The local yes, TV revenue would be an issue. You are not going to have Eastern Conference owners at this point and maybe in the future Western Conference owners who would let you seed 1 through 16 because then you have less Eastern Conference teams in the playoffs. You are not going to have less all-stars in the Eastern Conference. Over the years. It will shifts. vary, but you would need guys to vote for it now, owners to vote against their own interest now. I've talked to owners who say 70 games is right. I mean, there's an actual I, I, in I will believe it when I see it. If it's 1 through 16, if it's 1 through 16, you have that team that's on the cusp of the playoffs maybe get a lottery pick in the Eastern Conference and you'll the rebuild will be a lot faster. I believe there's you. a reason we are not close to this. I believe in Seattle. <clears throat> I do want to get to the Phoenix Suns um, because this was amazing. And you've been doing some reporting around Phoenix, so I want to make sure we do this while you're still on set with us. Okay, so <laughs> this is an advertisement for a meet and greet with Jack Jackson at a local Phoenix supermarket. Um, these are the people who came to see him. He did not come to see them. Suns interim GM James Jones, he was there. So what did he do? This is why we love James Jones. The champ, he brought everyone there free beer. So look, the team finds... What about finds... the kids that couldn't drink beer? <laughs> Well, the kids want to see the players. I mean, you know. Um, look, <laughs> look. the team then later fined Josh Jackson 20 grand for missing the Ooh. event. I believe he is doing some sort of makeup. Paul, I just want to know, is it free beer better than meeting an NBA player? Which would you prefer? Would well, you as a kid, as a fan, yes. I wouldn't be able to get a beer. So okay, what's so the makeup for that kid who brought, who brought the jersey, the ball, the Josh Jackson shoes? Like, what's the makeup for that kid? A free <laughs> ticket to the game? I, I, yeah, I don't know if they're doing Doing that, I mean, you again have been around Phoenix. Give us sort of the big picture here. I mean, we saw Devin Booker's comments. I mean, this is a sick franchise right now. I mean, okay. in so far as it is a franchise where there's not a lot of accountability, um, there's not a lot of pride in, in sort of organizational culture and cohesion. Um, they are losing games at, at record amount. They're actually, you know, probably on pace to, to win fewer than you know 25 games. I think for the, is it the third or fourth straight season, uh, it is in my piece. But um, 
they need help. They they need an organizational they have the number one reset. Draft pick this year? Of course it goes, and this is what we do. We, we let's let's reward a failing franchise that, right. that, that sort of can't even do the most basic functions of fan relations correctly <laughs> with getting them more talent. Right. But that's a different conversation. Another yes. reform for another day. Okay. Um. But it, it, it needs a reset. I mean, there needs to, be, and they've got some good talent. I mean, obviously that, yeah. that's the good news. The good news is they they've got a, a collection of young players, but they just they have, there's a leadership void there right now. And James Jones is doing everything he can, but there, in, until there is from the top down a, a plan, what is the plan? So are you are you suggesting? I mean, we can't force the ownership to sell the team. So what are you no, suggesting happens top um, down? I I, I think what they they need to figure out a direction, assign responsibility to a a a new whether it's whether it's the existing team of of, of Buckstein and Jones, whether it is getting someone from outside the organization, and to lay down a new set of principles, whereby like, and also ownership needs to allow this executive team to do its job. They need to be empowered to make personnel decisions. They need to be empowered to hold people below them accountable. And they need to beef up their, their scouting staff. And, and, and really, they just, it, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's really difficult there right when now. When a player doesn't feel like he has to show up at a fan event, what, what does that say to you as a player about sort of how the organization is being run? What's Phoenix's reputation compared to maybe when you came into the league? I just think, like, there's no leadership, one, because I've never even seen that. You know, a guy not show up to his team appearance, you know, that's usually something that goes hand in hand with going to practice. You just go, mm -hmm. you know, because there's not a lot of them during the year. So you go out there. But the one thing that's discouraging about them losing all these years is you're right. They don't have a plan. Philadelphia made their fans buy in. Right. They lost every year, but they were excited because they had something to lean on, like trust the process. Right. And there was a plan in place. I don't know so much about what Sacramento was doing a few years ago, but now they have arrived. So, you know, Phoenix needs to come up with a slogan or something to let well, people know where I believe they we have will, one, right? Michael Schwartz, our I mean, researcher. <laughs> time to, no, 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 but don't they have organized? You know, our because they have, they have the great, timeline. They have there we go. Our blocks. researcher, Michael well, Schwartz, well, is, is a Suns fan who has suffered every season. Well, I'll tell you a story about this. I was, I was talking to an exec from a different team, and they do this drill where they sit around and say, what are the other 29 teams? Let's define what their philosophy is. And they go through the list. Atlanta, a team that's, that's rebuilding and, and accumulating assets. Philadelphia, a team that's going for it right now. Los Angeles. Angeles Clippers, they say, you know, a team that's pursuing multiple tracks simultaneously. And then something interesting happened. It was like, oh, what about Phoenix? And everyone around the table is like, you know, what are they doing? Right. Are they are they going, well, they signed a bunch of veterans, right? So maybe they're trying to win now. Well, no, no. It's like, well, wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Right. They have the younger guys. Well, wait a minute. What are they doing with their cap space? And after the entire conversation occurred, everyone's like, all right, so, so how do we want to classify them? And everyone was okay. like, we don't know. The timeline is, is yeah. not worked out yet. And I do want to just emphasize as we go to break here, what you said about James Jones very popular around the league. I think a lot of players like the idea of going to a place where he is involved in management, but he has to be empowered. And the idea has been that, hey, he hasn't been empowered yet in a way that gives him that authority he needs. According to 98.7 FM in Phoenix, they are starting a new search for general manager. James Jones will be considered. If he gets that job full time, maybe then he will be empowered to do a little bit more. We are going to keep watching them because, again, it's a market with so much young talent. They're in the running for the number one overall they pick again this innovation. year. They defined on the floor, in the and health then, program, everything. And, and not so much anymore. But thank you, Kevin Ernest, so much for joining us. Um, you guys stick with us because we got to get a little more jump trivia. Paul didn't think our last jump trivia question was hard enough. So the producers have kind of upped the stakes a little bit. Which player has spent the largest percentage of time going slow this season? This. this is second spectrum. I mean, look, if you can't ask a second spectrum question at the Sloan Analytics Conference, where else can you ask them? you got to stay with us until after Before the break. Before the injury, it was John Wall, wasn't it? Well, we'll just say you're going to have to wait till you will stay tuned with America to see the answer after the break.